Welcome today to Denver Rotary. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and the four-way test. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? What, does it build goodwill and better friendships? Is it beneficial to all concerned? Next, I'd like to invite Seth Patterson up to the stage for our inspirational moment. And today, after Seth, we are going to remain standing to announce the Rotarian of the Year and the new Rotarian of the Year. Thank you, President Allison. I'd like to share a few quotes with you this morning. The human animal differs from others of the animal kingdom in that it is normally progressive. The only thing that can hold the advance of the human animal long and in check is precedent. It is well that there is nothing in Rotary so sacred that it cannot be set aside in favor of better things. This is an experimental age in a changing world, and all things that are worthwhile and progressive are the cumulative effects of preceding successes and failures. The third one is, I would like to think that the pioneering, pioneering days of Rotary have only just begun. There are just as many new things to be done as ever. Kaleidoscopic changes are taking place, many of them without our will. Even to hang onto the fringe of this fast changing world is all about most of us can do. Rotary simply must continue to pioneer or be left in the rear of progress. Some of you may know or have guessed that I'm quoting our founder, Paul Harris, between 1930 and 1945. And you may know that he founded Rotary at the tender age of 37. As our incoming president, Jim Goddard, and his team take the reins, let us hope and pray for them to have the wisdom foresight and courage of our founder. I know they are considering changes for us and we simply must support change in Club 31. All too often Rotary can seem about our history and history is important, but please listen to the wisdom of Paul Harris. Change is in our DNA. Please also keep Peter Bowes, one of our Club 31's own fearless leaders in your thoughts and prayers. Unfortunately, as many of you know, Peter's very ill. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Now I'd like to invite Mark Donovan, our uh, new Rotarian of the Year from last year, to help me present um, the award this year. So this new Rotarian brings enthusiasm and dedication to everything. They work incredibly well with newer, younger members of the club, while also being effective and outgoing with our more senior members. Never hesitates to pitch in with any project, whether it's serving on a committee, introducing new members, digging right on on a hands-on project, or contributing an idea that is clear, intelligent, and often inspiring. He's a sustaining contributor to both foundations, attended the branch Ricky after only one month with the club, a regular attendee at the club with spouse, active on World Community Service, membership, branch Ricky, and the Vocational Scholarships Committee. The Rotarian joined the club September 30th, 2013, only nine months ago, and enjoys 100% perfect attendance. Thank you, Brian Geis, for introducing this outstanding Rotarian to Denver Rotary. Join me in congratulating our new Rotarian of the Year, Chris Peters. Chris, please join us on the stage. Next, it's my pleasure to invite Young Cho to the stage to help me present this year's Rotarian of the Year. This Rotarian received many nominations throughout the club. The, this Rotarian wears the pin everywhere and really represents the spirit of a Rotarian. 
brings wisdom to all meetings and is always thoughtful in responses, often bringing a new slant to conversation. Served on the club board of directors holding office positions 2000 to 2002. Supports both foundations and is a Paul Harrow Fellow plus one, DRCF Fellow, and new Legacy Society Charter member. Served on the DRCF Board of Trustees 1991 to 1997, currently serving another six year term. Regular attendee at the Branch Ricky Award and generally contributes photography to the Branch Ricky Silent Auction. This Rotarian's active engagement in club youth activities and initiatives has had a positive influence on in our community. Among other things, it's chair of the Memorial Resolutions Committee for several years. His company has been involved in the community and been giving back in many ways, donates postage from his company to many nonprofits when able. This Rotarian's commitment to Denver Rotary uh, over the past 27 years and to the community is admirable. Based on his nominations, there is so much more I could share with you, but there simply isn't enough time. When I say Rotarians are a people with a soul for service, this Rotarian is my role model. Join me in congratulating our Rotarian of the Year, Todd Bacon. Todd, you also have your wife, Nancy, with you today as well. So congratulations to Nancy. Thank you so much. Enjoy your lunches. So today, Bill Hornby, Grant Wilkins, Jim Wilkins, Mike O'Connell, RJ Ross, Dick Metcalf, Steve Mast, Bob Kapelke, Sue Fox, Doug McLemore, Seth Patterson, and Jim McGibney. Thank you for your service. We also have uh, two district governors here today. We have uh, our current DG, Dan Himmelsbach, and Peter Ewing here today. So thank you so much for coming. And I have some very special guests here today. Oh, Kevin O'Connell. I'm sorry, Kevin. I did not see you. Thank you so much. I have some special uh, guests with me here today. I said that our table might be a little raucous. Um, I have both of my parents here today, jo Julian and Joanne Clark. My dad, I think, raised me with the four-way test if I've never known a more ethical person than my father. My mother has such a generous spirit. She always, t I always say that she spoils me. She says that I'm just well loved. So what, what a great thing. I also have my sister and her family here today, Carrie, John, William, and Carolyn. And my sister I count as one of my best friends. My uh, brother-in-law, John, is so fabulous. Whenever I go over to their house, he always makes me an Aunt Allie Waite margarita, which means it's about, I think, half the alcohol that he gives to everybody else. Uh, my niece and nephew have put up with a lot of crazy Aunt Allie annex over the year, and I'm so happy happy to have them here. And of course, my good friends, Marion and Kathy, who support me at the bank and help me to do better with my leadership. And of course, my husband, John, who is such a special person in my life and who supports me in all my activities. So thank you, my family, for coming. Now, I'd like to call on Club Secretary Brian Blankenberg, Senior VP and Client Advisor for Bank of the West, to give this week's Secretary Report. Good afternoon. I'll just go right into uh, announcing a couple more guests here. Unfortunately, my wife and daughter weren't able to make it today, but. Uh, they uh, were here last week, uh, so hopefully everyone got a chance to say hi to them. Got two prospective new members here today. Glenna Norville has brought Cynthia York, and she is the Senior Director of Development with Denver Kids. 
Cynthia, welcome. It looks like, I think I see her in the back there. Welcome. And uh, Tuck Troutman brought uh, attorney associate Case Collard from Dorsey and Whitney. Welcome. Couple Berthetarians. Uh, if you would just stand, and I'm going to read everybody off and we'll clap at the end. Michael Allen, Jared Jackson, Lonnie Kandel, Sue Davis Hornby, and Jeff Kraft. Happy birthday. You are cordially invited to Denver Rotary Fellowship Golf Outing, and this uh, is not just for Rotarians. Please invite uh, friends, uh, prospective new members, as well as spouses and family members. Rotarian Young Cho is hosting a golf outing at the Pinehurst Country Club on Monday, August 18th. See Young for details, but uh, also after the event, he will also be hosting cocktails at the Cho residence um, on the fourth fairway. So please uh, see Young and sign up for that right away. Rotarian Day, Rotary Day at the Rockies. Uh, we're still taking reservations for our picnic lunch at the Rockies. Look for a reservation email on Monday. Annual peach sale. Our annual, pe annual Rotary peach sale will be Saturday, August 9th. The link will be on our website later today and tomorrow. You will receive an email with a link for online ordering as well. There are flyers on everybody's tables. I'd like to thank David Pitchford for host, from uh, Grable for hosting t Tuesday's Rotary Connect Happy Hour. Thank you very much, David. And lastly, uh, Jim Johnston, as many of you may know, uh, just recently completed on this past Monday his 100-hole hike. He actually did 108 holes, which he walked. Uh, his goal was to raise $10,000 for Polio Plus. 56 people supported him, including 33 Rotarians. And as of today, as of right before this meeting, he was just $14 short of his goal. It's not too late to contribute, and so I'd just like to call out right now to see if uh, anybody would like to contribute to th that last bit to get there. Okay, I see three different people here, so you're going to more than make up for that 14 because all these people now have... Uh, Jim, did you see everybody? I, don't, I can't see where you're seated. All right, great. Thank you. So I was hoping that Amy would be here, my wife would be here, because I was, I'm going to tell a joke that's one of her favorite jokes, and I uh, figured I'd save it for the last one in case uh, anybody booed and hissed and didn't want me to tell jokes afterwards, then I don't have to worry about it now. So a guy and his wife are sitting in the backyard, and uh, the wife is leaning over and doing some yard work and uh, pulling some weeds. And the husband's sitting there real nice and comfortable with his iced tea in his hand and looking at her. And he's looking around the yard. And he notices something. He goes, Ethel, well, I'll be damned. Your, your butt is as big as the grill. Have you noticed that? And you know, Ethel, knowing that uh, how to handle her husband over so many years, just you know, ignores them, basically. Later that night, uh, they're in bed, and, and George decides he wants to get a little bit frisky, and, and Ethel turns over and says, uh, I'll be damned if I'm going to heat up this big-ass grill for one little weenie. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'd like to call on Todd Bacon, our Rotarian of the Year, Chair of the Memorial Resolution Committee. Thank you, President Allison. One of the traditions of this uh, changing of the guard meeting is to pay a final tribute to our members who have passed away during this Rotary year. So accordingly, I ask that the membership please stand to watch this video slideshow, a celebration of life.
Thank you, Todd. Now I'd like to invite emerging uh, membership, our membership chair, Mark Devon Donovan, and members of the Emerging Professional Cohort Group to the podium. The membership team this year invested uh, time to create the platform for our emerging professionals. Our concept is a 12 to 18 month journey with a transition to standard ordinary membership. This team will then mentor our next group of cohorts. This is a unique concept which feels right for our club. Mark, I'd like to invite you to introduce our emerging professionals. Thank you, President Allison. I'd like to begin with our, one of our emerging professional members who's here in person. We're gonna inaugurate a number of members in absentia, but I wanna start with our friend Matt Malpin who's here with us today. Matt is a second generation real estate investor and private lender. Before real estate, he had a well-paying job working for a high-tech Fortune 500 company. His career offered great benefits and job security, or so it seemed. In the early 2000s, the tech bust left him jobless. At that point, he experienced a huge paradigm shift, realizing he could no longer depend on what seemed like a stable company. How many of us have been in that same boat? Matt has now been investing in real estate for over 12 years, buying his first property at the age of 20. Throughout that time, he's been involved in single family, multifamily, industrial office, and self-storage properties, totaling over 90 transactions. He currently holds and manages a portfolio of properties. Today, Matt is owner and president of Infinite Capital Group, LLC, a private lending company that provides financing to real estate investors and offers asset-backed management, uh, asset-backed investments to qualified individuals. Matt is also a member of an elite group of private lenders across the country that includes the top 1% within his industry. Let me introduce Matt Maupin. As I mentioned, we're inaugurating a number of people in absentia. Next up is Matt Smith. Having always demonstrated a strong passion for the financial markets, Max in joined the industry. Here's Max. Matt, Max joined the industry at a young age and currently has over a half decade of experience. Matt joined the IFM Capital Advisors team as an intern at UBS Financial Services in 2008. Can you imagine starting your career in the finance industry in 2008? He primarily focused on marketing and sales as well as operations, but also assisted with investment research, reporting, and allocation analyses. Matt quickly developed a role within the team and while simultaneously pursuing his bachelor's degree, he became a client sales associate a year after joining the group. Today, Max is a vice president in Denver, primarily focusing on managing marketing and sales. He's also a portfolio manager for select high net worth individuals. Max earned his BS degree in economics from UC at Denver. Currently residing in Denver, Matt, Max enjoys biking, skiing, golfing, hiking, and camping. We have a special rotary connection with Max. He's the grandson of our member, Carolyn Smith, and the nephew of our member, Gretchen Neen. So thank you, Carolyn and Gretchen, for inspiring Max. Two more members to inaugurate in absentia. Next up is Neha Shaw. Neha writes, I'm not your average Southerner, being Indian and of immigrant parents. However, I am Southern at heart, and this is best evidenced during college football season. Aside from Alabama football, I enjoy all that Colorado has to offer, having moved here for residency, and now with more free time can partake in more that Denver and our area has to offer. And I look forward to becoming a greater part of this community I call home when becoming an active Rotarian. I sincerely admire all that Rotary represents and hope to play a small role in its service to Denver and abroad. Neha is a physician currently employed with the Metro Community Provider Network. And our last in absentia emerging professional cohort member is Justin McNamara. He was too shy to sit for a photo. Justin is president of, the, of McLan LLC. 
Justin McNamara served in the Air Force for six years as an air traffic controller, three years in Ramstein, Germany, and three years in Warner Robins, Georgia. After his father passed away, he started a private lending business that helps family and friends invest in real estate in safer and more profitable ways. Justin currently works as a lease records analyst for the Quiet Companies and is finishing his business degree at the University of Colorado at Denver. Justin writes he's married to his beautiful wife, Kelly, and they have a nine-year-old son, Aiden. They are passionate about guiding youth into mature, responsible adults inspired to make a difference in the world. President Allison, it is truly my pleasure to introduce you to these outstanding new Emerging Professional Cohort members. Thank you, Mark. Now I'd like to uh, go ahead and do our new member introduction for Matt. Rotary is a worldwide organization of business and professional leaders who provide humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards in all vocations, and build goodwill and peace in the world. We welcome you as a member of Rotary Club 31 because you are a leader and because we believe the principles of Rotary in Club 31 are safe in your keeping. You joined Rotary because your sponsor helped you understand how your life would be richer with Rotary in it. We invite you to join a committee and start networking with our trusted partners, other Rotarians. Once you take those actions, you will discover the true essence of Rotarians, people with a soul for service. We also look for you to inspire each of us to become better Rotarians as we serve our community and world each day. Thank you, Matt for making this pivotal decision to launch your Rotary commitment as an inaugural member of our emerging professional cohort team with Club 31, the largest, oldest club in the state of Colorado. We look forward to joining you in your journey of discovering your own passion in Rotary. And thank you, Mark, for inviting and inspiring Matt. The time is now to engage Rotary and change lives. Fellow Rotarians, please stand and help me welcome our newest member, Matt Popin, and our entire emerging cohort team. And I'd also like to make sure we, man, uh, we acknowledge our Rotarian liaisons, Michael Allen, Allison Euler-Mitch, and Brooke Schiffner. All right, it's time to start the uh, recognition of our club leadership. And I would like to go ahead and ask our members to hold our applause until everyone has been recognized. Um, I'd like to invite uh, our secretary, Brian Brankenberg, to come up to the stage with me now, please, as well as our treasurer, Jack Green, who is stepping down after three years of service. As Brian and I have been sitting next to each other um, over the past few months, we've had quite a number of conversations about his new uh, daughter, and um, I have uh, a bet with Brian that he is going to be buying an American Girl doll for his daughter. He claims that he finds them wildly expensive and he's not buying one, but um, as preparation I have um, purchased an outfit um, that I don't think he's going to be able to resist. So, thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to ask the following officers to stand and remain standing to be recognized as a group. President-elect Jim Goddard, first Vice President Charlie Miller, second Vice President Christy Schaefer, Sergeant-at-Arms Will Snyder, 
immediate past president, Jim McGigney. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to invite our outgoing directors to come forward and receive a recognition plaque. Peg Johnston. Are you here, Peg? Bob Loudermilk is not here today. Uh, Charlie Miller and Rich Spong, thank you so much for your service. I have greatly appreciated it. Now I'd like to recognize our continuing directors. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing to be recognized as a group. Pam Adams, Larry Gloss, Don Lewis, Mike O'Connell, Giles Poulsen, Christy Schaefer, Wynne Gandera, Tom Bays, who is resigning effective June 30th. Please give our club directors a hand of applause. Now I'd like to recognize our standing committee chairs and subcommittee chairs, and I'd like each of you to stand and hold applause until I've recognized everyone. Unless I've specifically mentioned, all will be continuing in these roles in our next fiscal year. Club service, Jim White. History, John Stewart. Attendance and club recognition, Jim White and Sandy Adams. Memorial Resolutions, Todd Bacon. Family of Rotary, Sue Davis Hornby. Communications, Valerie Hopkins. Meetings, Pam Adams, who is stepping down after two years. Our blessing and inspirational moment, Lanny Langdon. Registration table, Nancy Austin. Fellowship meetings, Don Caney. Siva, Doug McLemore. Audiovisual, Doug McLemore. Membership, Mark Donovan. Retention, Brian Geis. New member orientation, Carter Sales. Past presidents, your Rotary friend, Jim Warner. Collegiate International Student Engagement Program, SICEP, Jeff Howard, who is stepping down after two years. Rotary Broadband Project, Harriet Downer. Rotary Foundation Support, Rich Spong, stepping down after three years. Social Activities, Debbie Kaufman. World Community Service, Phil Gettert, stepping down after two non-consecutive years. Youth Services, Melissa Kelly. College Counseling, Chuck Everall and Jerry Middle. Denver Center for International Studies, Dan Lutz. Interact Club, David French. JA DCIS Team Teach, Christy Schaefer. High School Scholarships and Community Resources, Wynn Gandera. Ryla, Scott White. Scholastic Art Awards, Todd Bacon. Shining Stars, Jim Wilkins. Vocational Scholarships, Todd Krapp. Youth Exchange, Scott White. Club fundraising events, 2013 Branch Ricky Award, Harry Ellison. 2013 Peach Stale, Kyle Henderson. Rotary Projects and Partnering Organizations, Nine Health Fair, Holly McLemore. Denver Kids, Inc., Glenna Norvell. Project Cure, Wynn Gandera, who is stepping down after three years. Please give our club leadership a round of applause. Next, I'd like to recognize our Rotary office team and please stand up. Jamie DeMette, Steve Engbers, Darlene Mast, our Assistant Sergeant at Arms Hospitality team who is assisting Will Snyder at the door, Fred Taylor, Jay Yake. If you've been a volunteer at our registration desk and videotape our program every week, and all of you who have served on the mini club committees and projects, thank you so much.
Next, I'd like to acknowledge and thank our DRCF president, President Lucius Ashby, and I'd like to invite him to the podium for his final foundation announcements. Good afternoon, thank you. Um, this has been a great year, and, and time does really fly when you're having fun. For over the past year, the corpus of the foundation has grown from $2.9 million to $3.3 million, and an increase over $300,000. At, at the same time, the, the funds from the branch Ricky were slightly below budget, so, so we, you know, we, we did well. Uh, also, through the district, we received $64,000 for the flood effort, and we distributed $52,000 with other working clubs to, to um, individuals and organizations that, that were in need. We still have $11,400 remaining that we plan to distribute in July. The Grants Committee ha ha had a difficult task. We had $20,000 less to distribute this year than last. But, but we had a total of $243,000 that we, that we approved and went to 14 grantees. One of the grantees what was a new grantee that we gave $2,000. We also granted $5,000 for, for new club projects. The grants range from $2,000 to $121,000. And finally, we finalized the giving procedure for our legacy committee. We have 11 club members who have signed up as donors and were recognized at the foundation, at, at the celebration day. This is something everyone should consider. Thank you. It, it has been a terrific year for me for, and, and serving you. Thank you very much. All right. What have we done this past year? I started out the year by asking you all, how do we change the answer of who we are. And I think some of the next slides are going to demonstrate that. In my view, the answers to the question are membership with a succession plan to make Rotary relevant for the next 100 years. And engagement, which I have measured by service, district events, and programs. So what about our membership update? As you saw, we, la we launched our Emerging Professional Cohort Group. We look forward to incorporating the thought leadership for the team in our ongoing strategic planning. We recruited double the members over the prior year. 50% of our new members are under 40, so we are starting our succession plan. All year, I've said, Rotarians are people with a soul for service. And the next slides will speak to why I sincerely believe that. As you look at what we've done this year, we've raised over $64,000 for flood victims and distributed those through local Rotary Clubs. World Community Service raved over $1 million for two global grants in Mostar, Bosnia, and Burkina Faso, including a project cure shipment to Nepal. Youth Services Committee shared over 2,000 hours of their time with youth. We granted $263,000 to 12 recipients. Our board members each visited another club and brought back some great ideas to the board. We had great club participation in district events. We had the most members at the RI President's Dinner. Thank you, Don Lewis. We extended the hand of friendship at the district conference luncheon. And our social committee organized over 50 events. And these are just a few of the reasons why I believe Rotarians are people with the soul for service. One of the best pieces of advi advice I received from a past club president is to have fun. We've had many memorable programs and events, but these are some of the ones that stick out to me. Chris Hill 
comes to my rescue. Many of you may not have realized this, but the day that Chris Hill was introduced as a new member, the scheduled speaker uh, from the Broncos did not show up. As a newly minted president, I was anxiously trying to decide what to do. If I were forced to give an impromptu speech, it would have been on the scintillating topic of V lookups and pivot tables in Excel. Chris graciously agreed to be our speaker, and we all enjoyed the benefit of his experience. Thank you, Grant Wilkins, for saving me and the club. Another one uh, event that sticks in my mind is Branch Rickey. As you know, my shoes were auctioned off at Branch Rickey, so I could not bring them as a memento. So instead, I brought this skirt, which my sister Carrie knows was the result of a five-hour shopping junket when she was trying to get her house ready for Thanksgiving dinner. So as always, Carrie, you're the best. I loved our big Broncos cheer. I had fun wearing Broncos gear, and Charlie Miller did an awesome job of leading us in the chair. You may all remember my neon orange shoes that I wore to that particular event. We all had fun with Baxter Black at the National Western Shock Show. Lots of you commented on my red hat. William and I had fun riding the wagon at the show. Will wanted to race the stagecoach, but I told him that was not happening. And of course, we enjoyed the company of Dan Himmelsbach and his daughter in that event. I appreciated your attendance at the district conference meeting and how you all extended the hand of friendship. I heard a lot of cheering as people entered and Doug's tech support was phenomenal and Louise did a wonderful job of leading us in the national anthem. I have what I call a shoe coup shopping experience and finally located a pair of clear orange shoes. So I'm all sure you can clearly see the difference now between neon orange and clear orange. Thanks to Pam and the program committee for all of their wonderful programs this year. As you know, I have um, uh, spursed in some quotes in my um, ending of our meetings. And so this year, I thought I would end with a quote from John Muir, who I admire as a person, who said, the power of imagination makes us infinite. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your president. You are an inspiration to me. The time is now to use our imagination to engage Rotary and exercise our infinite potential to change lives. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, I'd like to invite Jim Goddard to the podium. And I'd like to introduce Jim's guests, his father, Jewel Goddard, and his sons, Wyatt and Sawyer. Thank you so much. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Okay. All right, so now I am going to remove my president pin and give it to Jim. And I'm also going to present the president badge and the gavel. All right, we have a very important uh, moment now. Um, this is the parking card. And Jim and I are going to arm wrestle. And we have um, looked at all the tables. Darlene and Jamie are counting them. I expect everyone at every table to have at least one uh, set of people arm wrestling. The goal is to have the most number of pins. The most number of pins, um, we will, that person will get to keep the parking card. So please, I'm not moving on until I see at least 
one set of people at every table. William and Carrie. you all saw Jim and I going like this, but the, of course, the message with that is that really what it takes to win is teamwork. You know, one of the things about Rotary, the beautiful things is that your president's year only takes one year. That's also another side of it is that you switch to new ideas. So Jim and I have worked together over the past year uh, in our teamwork and we plan to continue working together next year and we've already invited Andre to join us. So thank you so much. Thank you, President Allison. Well, we have more business to attend to. She's not done yet. So uh, next on our agenda actually has to do with uh, some other things we're presenting to you. First of all, um, I'm presenting her with her past president's pin. And it is really very pretty. Might even go with some of your shoes. Oh, good. In addition, we have for Allison uh, a very special memento, which is a combination four-way test and a silver dollar minted in Denver. Oh, great. I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you have to speak for those, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. And then finally we have a, or not finally, but next we have a plaque with her gavel And Darlene, do you want to join me up here? We've got some gifts for you as well, Allison. I'm going to ask you to take the top off of it. She may end up wearing that. That one is from the, uh, from the staff of Rotary. And I also have, uh, oh, <laughs> there's no place like Rotary. <laughs> I love it. asking me about ruby slippers today. So oh, really? Happy. Now you have your own ruby red slipper. I also have a personal gift for you. And you can open this really quickly, I'm sure. It may require a, a little bit of explanation. For those of you who may not know, that's a uh, shoe store. <laughs> this is a uh, bowl full of um, rocks. And uh, this has special meanings because she is a rock collector. And of course, it runs in the family. And uh, I actually am a rock collector as well. This is a bowl full of of Oregon agates that I collected on the beach in Oregon and polished. Um, it was a tradition in our family, and so now you will uh, have a memory of Rotary and this passage of the gavel. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. You and we also have some flowers for you, Allison. Okay, well, I have to say that this is quite an honor for me, uh, truly an honor, and I want to thank my sponsor, Dr. Michael Muftik, where is Dr. Muftik, for introducing me to Rotary, very much appreciate that. Um, he is on our medical advisory committee at the Nine Health Fair, and a uh, very significant person there, it's a very significant group, 
So I was very honored to be here and extremely honored to be chosen to be your leader for this next year. So I'm going to show you just a few things uh, to kind of kick off this year. Um, first slide is actually, uh, oh, am I getting ahead of myself? Sorry about that. So first of all, we're going to introduce the other leaders. Uh, uh, these are the new board of directors, new members of the board of directors, and I'm going to quickly try to get to my right page here. Uh, first of all, Rich Harris, uh, please stand, and then we'll recognize them when they're all standing. Valerie Hopkins, Jim Johnston, Melissa Kelly, Rick Bauman, who is taking the remainder of, uh, of the term that uh, Tom Bass is, uh, is vacating to be at the Rotary, Cl uh, Rotary Club of Boulder. Um, and also our new club officers, which include Andre Van Hall, Sandy Purcell as our treasurer, Christy Schaefer as our new secretary, Will Snyder as sergeant at arms, continuing, Pam Adams as our first vice president, Mike O'Connell as our second vice president, and of course our immediate past president, Allison. Let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> now I would like to recognize the standing committee chairs. First of all, our meetings uh, chair, Jim Mack, Rotary Foundation support, Don Lewis, World Community Services, Mary Penny, please stand and you'll be recognized. Uh, club fundraising events, 2014 Branch Ricky Award, Charlie Miller, 2014 Peach Sale, uh, Mark Ballinger along with, with Kyle Henderson. Our Project Cure chair, Chuck Pell, is Chuck here? And also, I want to acknowledge our incoming DRCF president, uh, Alice Bullwinkle, who I don't think can make it today. Let's give them all a round of applause. Okay, now we're ready to talk, talk about goals for this next year. This first slide is actually a continuation of Seth's blessing, and thank you, Seth, both for your comments and for a lead-in here. I wanted to quote our founder, Paul Harris. This is a changing world. We must be prepared to change with it. The story of Rotary will have to be written again and again. Quite a leadership statement from back in 1905. I think it's important to note that uh, um, I was born into a Rotary family. My father, who is active in the Rotary Club of Olympia, Washington, certainly instilled in me the four-way test, and now my two sons who've been very active, Wyatt and Sawyer, already in Rotary. They have been a part of the setup for the Branch Rickey Award for the last seven years, and uh, Wyatt was a young Ryla participant as well. My sister, in addition, was a Rotary Exchange student, so it's been running in the family quite a long time, and I'm very proud to have my father here who traveled all the way from Olympia, Washington, on his 87th birthday to be here for this celebration. <laughs> I was also lucky to join Rotary in a very significant year. That was in 2007, and there were a number of us who have been retained in Rotary from that class. We called ourselves Top Gear, and for those of you who are part of Top Gear, please raise your hands. I think you'll see how many of us are still here and very active. <laughs> this is a really interesting group. And I wanted to point out that uh, what I love about this group is that we have these shared values, and I noticed it right away when we first started. We do good things. We've done some amazing projects, and part of being thrown together and deciding about what projects to do, I think, brought us close to, closer together. And every project we deal, did well, and in addition, we've had a lot of fun together. I think that's really what the es essence of fellowship with Rotary is, and I think it's a model that we can use going forward. We all have this massive, all of us, have this massive uh, propensity to want to do good. And uh, that's an incredible strength of Rotary. But are we focused enough to do everything well and to really make a difference in all of the service opportunities that we have? This next slide, and I'm gonna run through these pretty quickly, begins to demonstrate some of the things that we are challenged with. First of all, this is the image, I think, that most people have of Rotary outside of Rotary. A small sign when you 
drive into a town in front of a restaurant or a hotel, or in this case, a medical clinic, where Rotary meets. But when I tell people, people that I'm in Rotary, immediately ask, Brady, I don't know what that is. Tell me more about it. I think it's a bunch of old white guys. And um, that's something that we have to overcome immediately. And certainly, we're changing that. We have been for a long time. This next slide is just a, a representation of the standing committees. And all of you have heard the leadership of those standing committees in our club. Very complex, but this is the way we organize ourselves. This next slide shows a list of just a few, well, most of the projects that we are involved in uh, related to service. It's quite a long list and really is a rich opportunity for every Rotarian to be involved. I'd like our young cohorts to pay a lot of attention to this because we want to engage you fully and immediately. And then this next slide talks about uh, the issues we address. And while some of you may not have been able to read all of these, that's okay, because what I'm really trying to demonstrate is that there's a lot going on in this club. Perhaps more than any of us can capture in its full essence in, say, an elevator speech. And this is the challenge. One of, the, um, one of my mentors, uh, John Wells, who I worked for for about eight years, who was the director of the Museum of Nature and Science, used to quote Peter Drucker, who many of you know, um, management guru, and he used to talk about uh, nonprofits. And one of the things that Peter Drucker would say and John would tell me over and over again is that good intentions are not enough. Good intentions are not enough. So are we doing all of this, all of what we showed you in the best way possible? I present that as a challenge to us. And I want to use a, a little bit of a metaphor. Um, my sons will relate to this. We have a uh, microwave that we've had for about a year in our home that's broken right now. <laughs> and uh, it does kind of a good job at certain things and not a very good job at other things. And so, as you can tell by these two growing boys, we don't have a lot of leftovers at our house. But uh, what I do sometimes is buy a full pan of lasagna from a local Italian restaurant. I put most of it in the freezer and we have to pull it out and we have to thaw it out in our microwave. Well, this microwave isn't very focused. You can put something in there and run it several times and pretty soon the plate is hot enough to burn your hands and the, the cheese is melting around the outside, but the entree still is not warm. And so uh, I use this metaphor because I've got to call a Sears repairman, uh, unlike disposable cell phones, they still repair microwaves, um, to have him come out. Well, there's no Sears repairman who's going to come out here and help us with focus. But I have to say that we have a lot of creative and philanthropic energy, just like this electrical energy that's going into the plate in my microwave, that may or may not be focused. It is a lot of energy expended by a lot of people here. And I would have to say that before we can change, which is the theme that Seth brought forward and certainly that Paul Harris has envisioned over time with Rotary, means that we can't change unless we really know who we are. Before we can recruit well, we need to be easily explainable. And before we can fundraise effectively, we need to show our impact, and that requires focus. So I would ask our club members, are we just bubbling the cheese on the outside, or are we truly heating the entree? This is a difficult process that we're going to go through. Certainly our grants committee faced this process and, and the challenges in the DRCF funding process this year when we were giving out grants. How do you prioritize between all the great projects that are here and all the passion that we have individually? As I said, there's no serious repairman that we can call to come and help us with our Rotary Club. All of you need to be involved in this. Those of you who are currently very active, those of you who are new members, and those of you who are veterans who are perhaps, perhaps letting the service um, be done by others. You can still be involved. We want you to be involved. So our mission this next year is to engage the passion for each of you and focus it. The challenge is that we have amazing leadership here, and each of us has our own passion. And that's a great part about Rotary. That's what results in all the various things that we're addressing, is the passion and the skill that all of you have. So we are setting up a task force for the first six months of this year, of this fiscal year, this rotary year, to begin to study how can we 
and to come to conclusions about how can we focus into specific themes. Maybe it's just reorganizing some of the things that we do, collectively pulling them together so that we can focus ourselves to do better fundraising, to focus our passion and, and individualize our service in a better way. So this last slide is really about our, our international theme, Light Up Rotary. Now this is kind of unfortunate for a state that's just uh, passed some laws to legalize marijuana. <laughs> so I want to note that there's not a comma in this. And I want to say that it really truly does capture what I'm talking about in the following way. President Huang, who brought forth this, this uh, theme, is talking about Confucius, uh, a quote from Confucius. And uh, Confucius once said that it's better to light a single candle than, candle than to curse the darkness. And I think locally in our club, we can light up Rotary in Denver from a single flame. And that single flame means focus for ourselves. It doesn't mean excluding things. It means focusing ourselves so that we can bring together all of the passion into something that really makes a, a good deal of great outcomes, a good deal of fundraising so that we can expand what we do. And in my theme for this year, focus will be um, will be coming up more and more. I think you'll see it through uh, the revelation of some strategic goals that we put together. And I want to say that that task force is made up of not just fresh new voices, but seasoned voices as well. So that those of you who perhaps see this as a challenge that may be threatening, um, your voice will be heard as well. So thank you sir, so much for this honor. I really look forward to leading this group. And uh, I just know that all of you are leaders. and so. It's a matter of all of us coming together into this focus. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, now it's my pleasure to introduce a past uh, president who is going to give us a little levity and uh, perhaps um, uh, make Allison a little bit uncomfortable. Jim McGivney, please come to the stage uh, for a little presentation for Allison. I don't know exactly where I've been, but I know it's good to be back again. I am the Mad Hatter. My friends and I have been summoned from Allison's past because one of the books that she loved growing up was Lewis Carroll's book, Alice in Wonderland. But she misunderstood when she first read the book because she thought it said Alice in Wonderland. And then it morphed into Allison's Wonderland. And that's the way she's led her life, in Allison's Wonderland. And today, we're honoring Allison's Wonderland. We have the Tweedles here. We have the March Hare. We're going to have a tea party. In fact, we invited Sarah Palin. We invited Ted Cruz. But they have their own fantasy worlds to deal with, so they couldn't come. <laughs> and it's been a wonderful year. It's been an exceptional year. It's been an absolutely extraordinary year. It's been OK, but it's been really, really Back again. Hello, hello, I am the Mad Hatter. And we have to talk to you today about Allison as an overachiever first. You know, she went to Thornton High School. She was the valedictorian. She went on to 
maintain a BA in English. You know what Garrison Keillor says about English majors. She graduated cum laude, and then she went on to get her MBA from Regis. She went on to get a certified management degree recently. She is truly an overachiever in every way possible, and today she has reached the extraordinary pinnacle. She's a SIFO of UMBA. How many SIFOs are at UMBA? Where is UMBA? Let me spell. CIFO, CFO, UMBA, UMB. She <laughs> was a super CIFO of UMBA. <laughs> and she earned that position the old fashioned way by hard, hard work. She started out 27 years ago. She was a clerk, she was a teller. She was an operations assistant, an accounting clerk, an assistant controller. She was a con controller. You're the controller. I have been looking for you. Each time we have a tea party, it goes into chaos. And somebody says, who's in control? And I have yet to find, I have found you. Do you have a lot to account for? <laughs> there are many things that we need to talk about later. Control. We need control. Back again. Hello, 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 away we go. Now, Allison is absolutely driven, even in her personal life. You know, she has a personal trainer. I won't ask. Personal trainer. In addition, she's bicycling, kayaking, hiking, camping, fly fishing, piano playing, rock collecting. In fact, her mother gave her up yesterday with photos, and I visited the rock shop, and it was great. Um, she knows a lot about rocks, but we won't take that for granted, oh, so to speak. <laughs> John John's Cardesty is here. He is Allison's husband. He served three campaigns in Vietnam. He is a Navy officer. We thank you. But <laughs> we think it took that training in order to put up with this Energizer buddy that we have here. And we looked at it. We think there may be doping involved because what we have learned from the newspaper is that you get up every morning and you make her four espressos. And, and then she immediately goes on to Starbucks for a Grand Americano and has three more espressos. And I think that's doping. <laughs> well, by the time she gets to work, she's sufficiently wired that you can see how much she gets done. But enough about her. Let's talk about what we're going to do here today. We're going to talk about Allison's footwear, and we're going to enlist some very special people. We have the Tweedle brothers here, Dumb and Dee, and just between us, one of them isn't quite right in the head. And you're going to have to help me figure out, because at the end of the meeting, I'm going to ask you to vote. So are the Tweedle brothers here? Could you join us, please? <laughs> Actually, they're both not quite right in the head, so. <laughs> So who is Dom and who is D? <coughs> We're the great Tweedle brothers. I'm D, and he's dumb. But my brother D is as dumb as they come. We've come here to chat about Allison's shoes. She owns way more shoes than one human could use. <laughs> she has slippers and sneakers and sandals and such. Even wooden shoes like those worn by the Dutch. She has sexy stilettos with heels sharp as nails. And slides, mules, and clogs that are ordered by mail. She has open toes, peep toes, and platforms and pumps and flip-flops that fly off whenever she jumps. She has Doc Martens, Chelsea's, and Lila's, and Crocs, and slingbacks that sparkle whenever she walks. She has saddle shoes, Mary Jane's, moccasins too. Of rattlesnake shoes, she has more than a few. Her passion for fashion, she never will lose. If she gets these old blues, she just buys more new shoes. 
That's enough news of shoes and of Allison's feet. Her best feat of all is, is just BFD being so sweet. And now we have a very special guest, and we're going to look at some of her past. Is the March Hare here? Where is the March? Oh! <laughs> Where is the swimming suit? <laughs> you will never know. OK. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm the March Hare, or today the June Hare, or perhaps the ghost McGiddon's hair. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, we have some lovely pictures here, and uh, feel free to join in anytime you wish. Ah, yes. I'm dreaming of a shoe Christmas. And that was the last time that Allison was shoeless. And here. Perhaps looking for the Easter Bunny or the March Hare. Okay. Look and at here, Allison is the fashionista in training. Look at those shoes. Yes. What size are they? <laughs> she could fill them up now. Oh, uh, yes. Uh. Toe-headed mischief. Here, yes. Double entry bookkeeping. It has to balance. <laughs> or perhaps she's just figuring out how much money she has for shoes. But that was an adding machine, right? Oh. Okay. <laughs> what does uh, she have? And that is now, is this karaoke? <laughs> or perhaps she's riding a horse? <laughs> and I really want to know what's with the guy in, with the gun in his belt next to her. Who is that? <laughs> but she survived. Uh, <laughs> yes, my dear, you may kiss my shoes. <laughs> and here? Fashion Maven. Um, unfortunately, she can't see how good she looks in that outfit. <laughs> now. What happened to that blonde hair? What did happen to the blonde hair? <laughs> uh, and here, that's, that, that's one of her scholarship students, but that's also her collection of bowling shoes in the background. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, and here's your scholarship money. Now, I have to get back to my trainer because you see what she's got on her arm. Yes. Yes. Got to get back there. Now, who are these old coots? <laughs> and where are my Bronco boots? They're there, right? Okay. That's good. And here, Rocky Mountain High before legalized marijuana. She led the 14er group. And in this three rotary sweethearts. Yes? Okay, all right. Uh, oh, yes, what is this? Yeah, why won't they let Allison ride a horse in that outfit? <laughs> with Doug Jackson selling his shoes saying that I'm too cute for you to cure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, shoes, that's what I'm talking about. And is, is that the one that Alice Bullwinkle bought? Okay. And here and wait till you see my other three closets of shoes. That's, that's Allison uh the Photoshop, Allison, that she wishes she had that shoe closet. <laughs> okay, and now shoes off to Allison Clark Hardesty. Thank you.
And thank you, Allison, for a wonderful year. That's it. Okay. All right. Well, we are rapidly uh, running out of time here, and so we, uh, we actually have a couple of extra minutes. I think we got through our agenda pretty well. But what I'd like to do now is, uh, first of all, thanks to uh, our troop here. Let's give them all a hand, Jim and company. <laughs> Including Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and March Hare. Thank you so much. That was great. And thank you, Allison, again for a wonderful year. Um, you've been a great mentor to me, and I, I hope that you continue to be. I think this has been a really uh, a kickoff year for so many new things. There's been so many new initiatives brought forth. You've had a great leadership group, and um, I'm sure you're glad not to be behind this podium now. Let's give her one more round of applause. Well, I'd like to thank again our Rotarians of the Year, Chris and Todd. Wonderful work this year. Um, I want to thank our, our presenters, all of the presenters tonight or today. Um, I'd like to now excuse our new emerging professionals to go near the front door so you can get up and move that direction now. What we'd like to do is to take the opportunity to welcome you with a handshake and a hello as we leave. Um, and uh, at this point in time, I wanted to remind you that next week, we are uh, going dark during the short week, so no meeting on July 3rd. Our next meeting, July 10th, we'll have a speaker, um, uh, Denver Attorney General Mitch Morrissey, who will be talking about the Rose Andam Center for Victims of Domestic Violence. Should be a very engaging program. I'm looking forward to working with all of you this year. This has been a great program. Thanks for everything that d you do. Thanks to all of the directors and everyone else who contributes to this club. You all do in one way or another. Thanks. And now I get to, for the first time, use my new gavel. Thank you. <laughs>